driving real connections and welcome our uh, panelists on the screen. Well, we've got uh, Mr. Lakshit Tripathi, Industry Head, Consumer Packaged Goods at Inmovi, as one of our panelists. Alongside Ms. Shreya Sachdev, Head of Marketing at Puma, Mr. Santosh Ayer, Vice President, Sales and Marketing, Mercedes-Benz, Mr. Anurag Kurana, CEO and Founder at New Gen Gaming, and Mr. Shubhamoy Das, a Senior Business Director at Group M uh, ESP Properties as the Session Chair. With this, I'd now like to uh, pass on the uh, live waiting to our session chair to take it forth and uh, have a great discussion. And uh, as you can see, a lot of excitement and I won't uh, overdue because of time, I'd, I'd like to uh, pass it on to you directly. Thank you. Thank you for this. Uh, good evening, everyone. I think uh, Manish really set the context up well for us because the topic of discussion today is about making gaming work for the brands. So thank you everyone for joining in at uh, E4M Game On. Uh, I'm Shubham Das. I'm from Group MESP, and I'm excited uh, to discuss and interact with our stellar panelists on making gaming work for brands. So just to set context, one might ask, why does gaming need to work for brands and advertisers? Like what Manish uh, pointed out. The reason uh, primarily in our mind, it, uh, it, is, uh, it has the audience of its own. In India, like Manish pointed out, uh, we are talking about 400 plus million audiences who are gamers actively which basically puts it at par with as good as for anything as good as IPL. I mean, these are active gaming participants that we have here with that massive a base, but fragmented and distributed across gaming, esports, and streaming largely. The purpose of this session is uh, to take a look at how brands are tapping into the passion and uh, uh, seeking to engage with them in the gaming environment they inhabit. To start off, I would want to call upon uh, Alakshit, uh, who works with InMovie and InMovie, as we all would know, uh, InMovie works with the largest uh, casual gaming publishers in the world, delivering engaging ad experiences. And it's probably the first step for most advertisers stepping into the world of gaming. Let's hear from Alakshit on InMovie's role in helping brands take baby steps into the world of gaming. Oh, thank, thanks, uh, Shubhamai. So, uh, so the so so let before I get get to tell you about how the brands are leveraging and how is Inmobi helping. Let's let's uh, let's look at the staggering numbers that there are. Right, OMD I think twenty twenty published a report which said that uh, three point five billion users are available through social channel and two point six are also available as a uh, are gamers. Right, so 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 you have seventy four percent of the total universe of social available as gaming. Uh, at the same time, you are roughly looking, uh, if you're comparing the ad spends, it would amount to only 5%. So 93 uh, billion kind of money gets pumped on uh, social in terms of media spends. At the same time, you would be seeing somewhere around $4.5 billion getting pushed on the gaming, right? So, so the skew is uh, large, right? And, but the skew is bridging. And that's, and that's where InMobi also comes and plays a role, right? To bridge that gap slightly. So we, we talk to the brands and talk about these numbers, right? That these are the kind of eyeballs that are there, right? 43% uh, 40, uh, of uh, females are gamers, right? So, so, so that becomes a, a, a pool where which excites the brand, like for example, uh, to, to a Puma or to, to a Mercedes, that, that number might be exciting, right? Now you have to find relevance among that. So, so in Mobi plugs in those audience segments, et cetera, and then basically helps you reach out to the right segment. The, the way brands, different brands are leveraging, for example, HUL uh, won a few awards even in the last year, right? Where, where they were looking at uh, gamification as an ad unit, right? You move the Wim bottle around to collect some leaves, which is a very simplistic game that you every user is accustomed to. And the kind of engagement rates that we generate on such campaigns also is a testimony that a user is very much accustomed to such games, right? So, so it's, it's not Mario that only a bunch of us remember playing, right? Everyone has played uh, Candy Crush. Everyone knows what Temple Run looks like, etc. Yeah. So thank you, Lakshit. That, that really sets up the context for us. And as I said, you are probably the ones who brings in the larger chunk of uh, advertising audience with their baby step into gaming. Uh, from there on, we would like to move on to uh, Santosh, uh, Mercedes, who's from uh, Mercedes. Mercedes has been an early adopter and pioneer in esports globally. I mean, the brand wears multiple hats as a global mobility partner to ESL, 
investor in esports teams and global partner to write games events so over to you uh, santosh we would love to hear how do you see the ecosystem evolving and how do you see uh, non endemic brands such as yours entering into the gaming ecosystem yes yeah so for us uh, thanks uh, uh, basically when we were thinking about entering into uh, esports worldwide uh, uh, for us it was all about engagement it was not about advertising to start with and uh, we uh, clearly know that even uh, you can say not street legal users uh, at a very early age when they start gaming they should be exposed to our cars and brands so uh, be it the grand tour is more where we are product placements uh, where you know there is an emotional uh, aspect of selecting that car and uh, you know i want this brand to be in the store i want to drive this uh, and from there uh, we have come a long way in a long way in a sense where we also saw that when you particularly talk about esports here the passion is huge the community is huge the sharing element is also high and uh, we then had strategic partnership with esl uh, right now with uh, right games uh, what we find is um, uh, it, it's the tangibility is lesser we don't measure this by clicks by leads form fills uh, you know and i think that's not the way to measure uh, the the presence of the brand uh, it's more to engage and we have seen over these years a uh, more and more of our own consumers you know it's not only the younger target group but we even find you know the s class average age of a customer is 38 years and it's as much into also gaming uh, you know and to many other uh, as form of recreation and also sharing you know with his friends and also uh, there is community aspect to it so here we don't want to be missed out we as a brand we want to be present where our customers are so it's more strategic more experienced still uh and uh, we go beyond uh, just advertising in fact for us the ad ad, ad expense on gaming is much lower compared to what we do on the experiential side uh, both on esports as well as on product placement so uh, that's our view coming to india uh, you know many years we were also watching this space uh, we had lot of global tie ups partnerships we were a bit uh, in the back seat uh, we participated in one of the esl uh, uh, you know gaming event uh, in hyderabad couple of years back and also we had small interventions but i can say in this platform that 2022 will be the big year where mercedes benz india will also enter esports the gaming platforms uh, we will also support the community so there is a very clear strategic plan uh, to get engaged more in this audience because as we saw as in rest of the world even the indian audience is matured enough they are also even our our target group and that's where we did a big market research is it relevant to you know a different target group but i think even high net worth individuals we find clearly very much interested into this aspect uh, the next step if you ask me what will may happen is gaming in cars so with autonomous cars coming in uh, you know you have the time to be in the car can i give that experience also in the head unit of course all this has to be legalized but it's already these discussions are on in many markets so Uh, i think this is therefore uh, a platform to be for mercedes benz uh, for a long time to come great santosh i mean uh, you contextualize it brilliantly the two keywords which i picked from your uh, pointers is community and engagement and since we are talking about community who better than anurag here who uh, who who founded this uh, company and is leading uh, penta esports so i i don't wish to steal the thunder anurag over to you please <laughs> thanks uh, shubhoy uh, by the way santosh whatever you said was music to my ear because that's what i've been telling all the brands uh, across that please use esports as a e uh, awareness funnel because that is the biggest utilization you can draw from esports and not not calculate roi in terms of clicks form uh, form fills or etc etc so that I, i what all you said was actually a music to my ears with that being said uh, we are uh, building up a grassroots for esports that is because when we got into esports uh, four four years back and started the company year back i think that was a space which was missing in esports it's a it's a kind of a blue ocean strategy everybody is wor working so much on the top of the funnel which is the pro scenes pro players platform for pro gamers whereas we are very clear we want to be the ranji cup for the indian cricket team so that's that's our positioning for esports and since we are working at the bottom of the pyramid the engagement with the community is much much higher of course with that being said we have taken a big burden on our shoulders because we have to reach out to those that many players but that's what we are focused at 
Brilliant. I mean, that was really insightful. And when I got to know about the work that you're doing at eSports Grassroots, it was, uh, it was heartwarming. Thank you. To say the least. But since we are talking about building community and working with eSports organizations and teams at large, I think this would be a perfect platform to bring in Shreya here. Uh, who leads the uh, brand Puma in India. Uh, so for the larger audience, Puma has been demonstrating a massive belief in the esports ecosystem with their partnerships across Cloud9, EOS Esports, GenG and uh, FPX partnerships. So Shreya, over to you. I mean, how do you see this uh, ecosystem evolving? Oh, thanks, Shubhamai. So I think the first thing probably to note about um, the esports space and the way it's evolving, right? I think um, in the hierarchy of the way we look at sports and performance sports, I think that definition itself is ex has expanded over the past few years, right? Um, so no longer are we saying that um, only say a football or, uh, you know, a badminton or a tennis or a cricket counts as performance sports, right? I think sports brands all across are also looking at esports as performance sports, right? And um, what that really does is it opens out this space from a sports brand perspective much more because as a sports brand, you would want to invest um, in a sports that's getting large scale traction, right? So um, I think given that esports now very much fits into the definition of you know performance sports we would as a sports brand look at it the way we look at any other sport right and invest in it the way we would look at any other sport so you would build products um, to enhance performance you would um, invest in the ecosystem in terms of athletes and teams um, you would look at uh, you know followers fans communities to engage with and interact with them there right so i think um given the 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 massive shift in terms of how we view esports i think it's it's a natural progression to say that a uh, sports brand any sports brand is um looking to invest in esports in a large scale way exactly the way you would in any other performance sport right so um you mentioned a couple of teams i think we're sponsoring about five teams now globally um we've created a bunch of products from time to time right including a very specialized gaming chair um, that sort of helps improve performance performance, a gaming sock, um, you know, we've, we've sort of leveraged, uh, you know, communities such as, you know, um, say you creating a Neymar Aftar in Fortnite or uh, creating products for our hoop stops, which is our basketball range and NBA 2K, right? So um, I think it's just pretty much the whole, um, the, the whole gamut of how any sports brand would look at investing in, in any performance sport, right? You would invest across the board, uh, both in terms of high performance, as well as in terms of reaching out to the amateur ecosystem um, and engaging with them as well, right? So, so that's really the way we look at it. Oh, that that was really great. I mean, you brought in the element of uh, esports and how it equates back to uh, real life sport, which is uh, still a, a lot of the. I mean, I mean, for lack of a better word, a lot of the senior community is yet seeing a distinction in. So great that uh, a brand such as Puma and Mercedes is seeing a promise in that and is seeing a transitionary uh, phase uh, with that respect. I mean, the key, the four key words which I, I think I picked up from uh, the introductory notes of each few is one was engagement, which all of you spoke about. One was esports from a performance perspective. I think uh, Alakshad brought in a great part on engagement with innovation, which is what uh, a platform such as InMovie brings into a publisher's uh, this thing. Uh, and Anurag touched upon uh, community and building community part. Uh, Anurag, actually, this question is more to you. Uh, from the community perspective, how do you see uh, streaming and the quantum of people uh, watching the streaming part of uh, gaming uh, adding value here? I think uh, that's very critical because these guys are watching that content for the entertainment purposes. So my, my perspective is very different when it comes to streaming. For brands, it's not just only about putting their logo on the stream. It's also about talking, doing experiential branding is more critical from brands perspective than just putting their logo on. So let me give you one example, which I, which is my favorite. Uh, there's a tournament uh, hosted by Riot called uh, LCS, which is their NA League of Legends Cup. So there's a big monster which needs to be killed. It's called Baron. But that Baron also gives you a power up to the team which slays that Baron for one and a half minutes or two minutes. So that is called a Red Bull moment. So that is the experiential branding where Red Bull has done, where 
because of that segment that it shows that if you take red bull you get a boost so that kind of branding i would love to see on the streams of course that is a esports event but that kind of branding i would love to see on the streaming uh, streaming when kids are streaming also because that's where it will give the message of the brand and not just put the logo of the brand fair enough i mean you you're talking about the occasional uh, the identifying of occasions exactly. and leveraging on it exactly exactly great sandosh would you want to fill in here on how does mercedes see something like this No, no. I I can only extend the example from Riot Games, the League of Legends. You know, the the final award ceremony. That's when the emotions are the highest, and that's when the brand is present. Uh, Mercedes Benz being the best brand in the world on the automotive side, we 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 uh, you know we invented cars, continue to invent, and that's the right timing for the brand to be relevant and present. And we are there during that uh, ceremony. So you know, this is so the relevance, contextual placements, and. Uh, Does it connect with the brand? I think uh, Shreya also explained some couple of examples of Puma was building a chair actually for sports. I think I found it quite interesting. I was not aware of it, and I think these are great examples. What can you do and extend the brand and just not? Uh, what we should not do is uh, spoil the gaming experience. I think I, uh, very clearly, um, then you it can have huge negative effect on the brand. So one has to be really careful in this space. These are enthusiasts, you know. They have their heart and soul into it. It's like any other sport. It's just that it's an e-sport, but you cannot discount it from the passion from the community. And there, if there is an intrusion, uh, you know, nobody likes it, or if it is not contextual. So we have to take that uh, precaution. I think the League of Legends is a perfect example. It's well done. There are brands there, multiple brands, but it's well crafted. Uh, and uh, I think that there is no sense of intrusiveness. Uh, when you go through such a platform great santosh you brought you actually brought in two very key parts i mean one is the non intrusive branding part and the second part is on how do we see contextualization of the brand's presence in a e- esports ecosystem i'll just uh, move on to uh, shreya here uh, shreya a question for you uh, building on what santosh said i mean eventually when you're talking of performance sport you're talking about performers who are the athletes part of it and as puma i mean over and above the esports uh, association part you do a lot of work with talent you do a lot of work with athletes so how do you see that as a space evolving in esports specifically considering uh, esports is going to be debuting as a medal event in asian sport, uh, games this year yeah no i think um, you know you're absolutely right i think um, a large chunk of investing in the sporting ecosystem is actually investing in athletes right um, and so yes uh, there is something in the pipeline and keep your eyes uh, peeled uh, with all of our other athletes um that we will be supporting in the asian and the commonwealth games you will see um you know uh, gamers here as well you will see um, uh, you know your esports athletes as well um so i think it's 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 really about you know like i said the entire funnel right um, you would want to invest in the performance side but like i said you also want to reach out to amateur gamers so you would do it all across the board right you would invest in like i said product you would invest in athletes and teams you would also invest in um communities where you can talk to amateur gamers right and and you would you know to santosh's point um today given the myriad of options that consumers have to engage online right um this is no longer the space where you can force your brand logo on them and they have no option but to consume it right um you you sort of force your brand plug down somebody's throat and they'll just go somewhere else right so it has to be um very very smartly done and and the way we really look at it is what are you doing to add to the experience right um that's really the way we look at it right so even with um you know for example when we launched our neymar junior collection we didn't just go out there and tell gamers hey you know i can just advertise to a luxus point right you can literally tailor make your audience and just talk to the people that you think are relevant but if you really want to go the next level um creating a neymar avatar and letting his fans actually play as neymar right that's when you're actually adding to the experience as opposed to interrupting it and um really trying to you know get a bit of visibility and frankly look ever since the advent of digital marketing i don't think logo placement has worked for anybody anywhere right um we all know this very well right so anybody that does not take the route of engaging with the consumers in a way that they find value adding realizes that um the marketing spends that they are making are just not as efficient from an ROI point of view great that you brought that up uh, shreya actually that gives me a great segue into moving to uh, the question to alakshit alakshit uh, i am just queuing in from what uh, santosh and shreya said it's it's about being non intrusive it's about being more than uh, uh, 
just brand visibility and i think from the tech part of it i mean there there is a certain part of identifying occasions but there has to be ample amount of tech involved in delivering those experiences also so i would love to hear from you on how's in movie envisaging this space and how are you building the tech capabilities so as to address to these brand needs right so so the non intrusive part and the tech part uh, comes together right so so there are certain amount of intrusion that people are already used to also right when we are consuming something on the tv you know ott is going to be more or less a replica of that game also from the very start uh, you you know that it's going to be uh, appearing some ad in the game break otherwise i pay for it it's a, it's a pre versus paid thing of a model right so so people understand it's the game break also provides an Uh, a, 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 an opportunity for someone to be uh, for a brand to be like a brand in a brand safe environment right there is nothing that is there on the screen except for the ad right it's not overlaying on something so so there is no language barrier anymore there is no context anymore it's just pure play uh, uh, ad over there that is one second is how the does the technology play a role right the technology can make it very relevant for you so i know that you are a female in 25 uh, 25 plus kind of an age you are a mother so i know holix might be a suitable brand for you right so i'm reaching out to you with holix right and then maybe i'm giving you a gamification on top of it which is about packing a lunch box for your kid right or or uh, just having a candy crush experience for that matter right so so that you win an uh, a reward or a coupon or something of that sorts in the end and then you can take this to the real world also right you you can ask that okay go and redeem this coupon in next 20 minutes right or otherwise buy so something of that sort so so it it is it, the tech actually goes beyond what we look at typically it is about engagement it is about being very relevant right and you are serving it at the right moment of time when the user is expecting it as well right you are not curtailing his game flow and then putting an ad right there nice i mean i mean it's resounding to know that there is a requirement from the consumers end from a gamer community which there is a tech platform who's wanting to service that and then there is a brand who's wanting to be in that ecosystem so i i mean it, it seems like a perfect recipe for success here but uh, bringing on anurag here so anurag since you interact with the community so much i mean on a day to day basis would love to hear from you on what is their expectation from the brand's point of view as in as in everyone understands that the community is large yeah it's also important to have the right i, I mean i i might have 10000 solutions but if it doesn't work for you it doesn't work for anyone so would would love to hear on that and rest can fill in there okay so community is community is independent of the brand because they just want to enjoy their gameplay it's the viewers who want to see that because one more point which i know our both the fr- uh, friends from the brands only and always already understand that part but just for other brands i want to just mention it that the i know the viewership is 15 to 30 odd but even that 15 year old guy is the ceo of that house so it is even the like merc mercedes they are positioning their brand in esports but i know it's not the guy's first car which is going to be mercedes it's going to be his third fourth or his father might be buying a car because mercedes is engraved into his head courtesy league of legends or riot he's going to he's going to at least push his parents have a look at mercedes he's not the decision taker but he's the good voice at the house so on that side what the community doesn't matter brand doesn't matter to the community they just want to enjoy their uh, gameplay but the viewers where the brand matters and where the brands also because if there are 10 people playing the game there are 100000 people watching uh, the game that's where the brands need to position themselves so one thing which we discussed earlier also that it's it doesn't need it doesn't have to be not need to be doesn't have to be in the face marketing because that is the worst thing any viewer would uh, take on him that if it's in the face marketing so it has to be subtle experiential marketing positioning with the right messaging etc that is what is more critical secondly if you want to interact with community i think what i expect from brand is to do more at least enable more uh, tournaments for those guys to participate 
for the community. So I think from community side, that would be my input to them. Brilliant. I mean, it's it's great to know uh, that the community is is there. There is scope for the brands to do more on the yes. community. Having said that, it's also important to hear the other side of the story. So, uh, Shreya, I mean, I, I'll open this up to you first. Uh, see, we are at the cusp of esports and gaming to just explode now. I mean, it's it's fairly clear on that front, and uh, it would be it would be worthwhile to set the ground rules from the advertising side for the community to also know that what is the expectation. So, over to you. Any uh, closing remarks on that? Sure. No, I think um, look, there is no confusion or um, uh, you know any doubt in our minds that the gaming community is a community that we want to engage with, right? I think we've also done um, a bunch of research, and I think about seventy percent of our audience today are amateur gamers in some form, right? Whether it's mobile gaming or console or whatever, right? I think um, so. For us, engaging with this community and look at least from what we've we've sort of realized is um, as a brand, it's it's super critical to be able to talk to an audience in the way they want to be spoken to, right? That's the only way that you as a brand will generate any sort of ROI, right? And here I'm not talking about sales, right? It could be uh, just brand recall, for example, right? You want a gamer to consider you, like to Anurag's example, right? Maybe a 16-year-old doesn't um, uh, really have control of his own wallet and, and to be able to go out and say, this is what I want to buy, right? But I'm solving for a, the long-term conversion of a consumer, right? I'm making a consumer for a lifetime. So, I would want to engage with that consumer in the way that they want to be engaged with on their terms, because frankly, that's the only way that you will generate any sort of recall, right? So it's it's very clear that if I'm talking to a gamer versus I'm talking to say a motorsport enthusiast versus I'm talking to somebody who, who watches tennis or who watches cricket, I would speak to them in their language and I will engage with them in a way that they want to be engaged with, right? So, I mean, there, there's absolutely no doubt that that is the way forward and and there's nothing else that would really work um in terms of as a brand making any inroads with the gaming community fair santosh anything uh, on that yeah i think this uh, entire industry is also growing leaps and bounds uh, on one side at the other side there is also some ethical responsibility so from uh, from our side we also have a clear code of conduct on how we can engage uh, on the platforms uh, but, you know, there's also a lot of criticism, uh, criticism on obesity caused by gaming, for example, mental health and uh, screen times and many other issues. So uh, we have to be careful when we are engaging on this platform. Sometimes, you know, we, we can also have uh, parents and others feeling, hey, are you promoting something which may not be there? Uh, you know, my colleagues in Stuttgart, uh, I think it was 12 to last year, they came up with an interesting concept with the Maumbar Foundation. They said, you know, the SK Gaming, which is, uh, they ran a contest where uh, as long as you run on the treadmill, we will donate, keep donating two euros to the Maumbar Foundation uh, to promote health and uh, awareness of walking and you know also in between that yes uh, you are just not stuck to the couch or to the console and you do it and the more you do it more we uh, you know donate certain proceeds so I think uh, the brands have to be responsible also here and it's one side is get your objectives out but uh, if you are really uh, you know a responsible brand one has to look at the entire 360 degree context uh, on how you have to be present and I think as Mercedes Benz globally we have done a great job over these years we have learned from it we have learned from uh, criticism. We have learned from also a lot of love and affection from the gaming community. And uh, I think uh, that's what we now want to bring to India and also see how can we participate in India and engage with our audiences here. Great, Santosh. I mean, you, you brought out a very important point on uh, being responsible while being uh, engaged with... Uh, you, you brought in a very important point on being uh, engaged at scale responsibly. Uh, responsibly. So, Alakshit, do you want to fill in uh, anything here as closing remarks? No, oh, I, I, as closing remarks, I, I would uh, put it this way, right? So, so a lot of brands have started seeing value in in this uh, in this area where where gaming, where it is where it is talking about the right message to to uh, to, to your end user, right? And, and you should be looking at it not just from the perspective of decision maker always. And I think that also uh, you should also be looking at influencers' legs. 
and tech is there don't constrain yourself thinking that okay if i want to do this right i want to uh, target uh, hijab wearing women in mayur vihar who also have cats don't don't restrict yourself thinking that i, I don't know how is that going to be possible right you come with a problem <laughs> probably figure out the right surrogate for you right and we'll figure out the right environment to serve that ad right great mr das so your final words before we conclude because we're really running out of time please absolutely please. i i think the it, it was quite a fruitful session here uh, and and the key take out for me uh, uh, that i got to learn today is about uh, gaming providing uh, engagement at scale we have multiple options the beat community beat esports beat uh, Uh, in-game advertising and a plethora of other options. So, uh, thank you, uh, the fellow panelists. I mean, it was a really fruitful conversation, and it was amazing to interact with you here. Uh, looking forward to working more on the and seeing you guys or more often than not on the gaming side as advertisers too. Over to you, Bala. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Mr. Thank and uh, thank you to all our eminent panelists for thank sharing you. your expertise and being with us today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.